One of the things I really struggled with when I was in welding school was overhead 7018. That junk just fell out on me. I got lots of scars to remember it by. So that's what we're doing today, overhead 7018. And can you use the same amperage for overhead as you can flat and horizontal? Let's find out. In an earlier video, I set the machine to 130 amps and did a 2F horizontal position multi-pass T-joint. And this is it. I cut a piece off the end there to do a cut and etch test. I'm going to use this side now for 4F overhead. And I'm going to use the same 1 8 electrodes and the same 130 amps for the overhead. This will be a three pass weld and so for the first pass, the root pass, I'm going to be using an angle something like this. For the second pass, I'll be more angled toward the bottom member. And then for the third pass, I'll be shooting it kind of straight up. And that's basically to use the force of the arc a little bit to push the metal up and to avoid undercut on the top of the top bead. So, you see I'm using a little bit of a drag angle, nothing too steep. You'll see me at times use more of a straight in angle and that's probably accidental. But angle is very forgiving as long as you hold a really tight arc. You can see that the edges of that flux are actually kind of touching on the edges of the metal there. So I can feel the flux scrubbing a little bit on the base metal. I'm not trying to jam it in there, I'm just trying to keep a really tight arc. I ran out of rod right there. I knew I wouldn't have enough rod to make it all the way to the end, so I'll make a restart. But let me show you a restart. This is for actually from a restart from a previous video, so this is not an overhead position, but it's the same technique. You light up ahead of that crater, go into the crater, and then carry on. And that lets you weld over all your arc strikes. I probably could go as low as 120 amps, maybe even 115 amps with this particular brand electrode or as high as 140, but i am just kept it the same just to show that you could use the same amperage for overhead as works on horizontal or flat. I have an old half round file that I ground some teeth into and I use it more often than a chip enamor for rake and slag. You ever forget to turn the grind mode off? I was using a wire wheel and I had the grind mode on and you get, re you get reminded really quick when the grind mode is on it's pretty bright. All right, the second pass, uh, roughly the same drag angle, but I'm pointing a little bit more into the bottom piece. And I'm trying to eyeball the top edge of that, of that puddle, and try to line it up with the edge of the previous bead and keep it the same all the way down. I, I'm not very good at it sometimes, but that's what I aim to do. I'm really trying to keep that same spacing to run a straight bead. And we'll probably see when I'm done with this bead and I rake the slag off of it that maybe it wasn't quite as straight as I hoped it would be, but it's not horrible. Definitely glad a little bit of variation there. Okay, ready for the last bead. A lot of times I will change directions if I'm experiencing some arc blow, and I did, I did get some toward the end of that rod there. So I'm going in a different direction this time, and hopefully that will fix it. And if it doesn't, I'll change directions again. See, I'm, I've got the rod angled really pointing up into the top piece for this third bead. And I'm really watching the edge of that puddle to make sure I don't leave any undercut. I didn't clean the mill scale off this piece. That's always a good practice to do. This actually would have welded a little bit better had I taken a little bit of time and knocked that off. People will argue and say you don't need to clean mill scale and stick welding will burn right through it, and it will. It's just easier to leave undercut if you leave the mill scale on. So it's always good practice to clean it off. I sped this up right here because I want to get to the part where we do a cut and etch test. A cut and etch test will only basically examine one single cross-section. It's still a very valuable tool to, especially if you do it very soon after you do the welding. You can kind of correlate the results with the puddle that you saw. And here we go. See how it reveals each layer of weld even. It reveals the depth of penetration or if you didn't get penetration and it gives you a little hint of the profile where you need to tighten your game up and things like that. Hey, I appreciate you watching. 
my online store is at weldmonger.com. These are the gloves you saw me use in the video. This is the machine that I used in the video. Thanks for your support.